All right, so this is going to be um, a demo of the return to libc style attack uh, buffer overflow that was, um, that was shown uh, in the GXPN uh, Linux exploitation days. So, uh, so return to libc is going to be a style of buffer overflows that's um, useful in the case where uh, the buffer input buffer is really small, um, as well as when uh, data execution prevention or DEP is enabled. So DEP is just um, a security measure. Um, that an application is, can be um, compiled with to be able to prevent execution on the stack. So we're going to look at our, this is our environment here that we were given. This is the VM. Um, so this pass libc, this is going to be our target program. Uh, we can see it's right here. Um, so we're going to use some other tools that we have here to be able to just analyze the, the program. So let's do that first. Um, so let's check SH script right here. We can run it to be able to figure out the security controls that the, pro that the program has. Um, so what we're interested in here is this NX right here. So NX is enabled. So NX means non-executable. So it's a Linux, Linux form of DEP, uh, data execution prevention again. Um, so meaning, yeah, execution on the stack um, is going to be prevented. So this method that we're using, the return to libc, is, is a way to bypass that. Um, so let's go to our steps here of written out, just to be able to figure out um, everything we need to do in this type of attack. So first step, we want to crash the program and analyze the buffer with GDB. This is our uh, new debugger um, that we'll be using in a command line. That's also um, fairly simple to use. Uh, so let's uh, let's just run the program. So it's looking at us for a password. Um, and so we can see here it says the buffer is too small and shellcode and is not executable as we've seen here. Uh, the NX bit is enabled. So let's look for a password. So let's pass it some minutes just to see what happens. Uh, access denied. Okay, let's try this again. Let's increase the buffer here, add a bit more A's. Segmentation fault. Uh, so we can see right here the buffer is really small that caused that segmentation fault. So it doesn't take very much. Um, so that means we're able to crash the program. So basically when you see a segmentation fault, it means that there is a possibility that there is a buffer below overflow that exists as long as it's vulnerable to it. Um, in this case, it obviously is. So we're going to look at uh, the program in GDB, we're going to analyze the functions, we're going to find this gets function, which is basically when the buffer gets passed to it, um, it's going to be calling gets so that we can pause the program at the time of the gets to figure out what's happening on the stack at that time um, and where, see where our A's are at and see how big the buffer is and, and what we need, what data we need to pass to it uh, in order to overflow it. Uh, so let's start up in GDB. Uh, this is our debugger. Okay, so let's do a disassemble main. Um, so this is just going to be able to show us the instructions that are happening in the main, which is the very beginning of the application. Um, so these are all the instructions all the way to the end. So uh, it's calling this function, this instruction function here called checkpw. This is probably going to be checking for the password that it's looking for. Um, so let's go ahead and analyze that. Do this as checkpw. Uh, okay, so this one's a bit bigger. Um, so this is our gets. This is the gets that we want to look for, as I was mentioning, um, which is where it's going to be copying that buffer. Uh, so we basically what we want to do is be able to pause or break, break, uh, set a breakpoint at the time of the gets, um, crash the program, um, and then analyze the buffer at that time. Um, analyze the stack at that time. So ESP is a stack pointer. So we're going to analyze ESP. Uh, so we're going to set a breakpoint right after that. So right after the gets occurs, we're going to want to see the contents of the stack. So let's go ahead. I copied that value. So we're going to go do a break on it. Okay, that's good. So let's just supply it a normal buffer size without crashing it. Um, so I'm just going to go up and copy uh, this right here. So this is going to run the program as well as pass the data uh, all at the same time. So I'm going to pass it. So this is going to actually be program, uh, Python uh, inside the program. So it's just going to run a command. Um, and it's just going to print 10 A's. And that's going to be passed as our input. All right, so it ran. Um, we hit our first breakpoint. That's good. Now what we want to do is analyze the stack at this time so that we can figure out what's happening on the stack, what, um, where, what our buffer looks like, and then what um, the return pointer and the safe rate pointers look like, things that we want to overflow. So examine, X is going to be examine. Um, 
this 20x is going to analyze 20 hex characters, and then we want to show the stack pointer. So ESP is um, the 32-bit uh, register uh, on the stack for the stack pointer. So this is our hex character. So this is this is one character right here. So these are blocks. These are basically in blocks of four. So we can see um, a is, uh, 41 is the uh, hex character for uppercase A's. So this is the beginning of our buffer right here since we supplied it 10 A's. So we've got four A's there. There's another four A's. And then there's two more. Um, so things are getting pushed on to the stack backwards. So that's why the A's are starting over here, not from over here. So that's our 10 A's. So that's good. So our, our buffer is there. We can see it. Great. Um, so let's just try to run this again, but increase the buffer size. So let's go to 20 A's. We're going to start from the beginning. Yes. Great. So our same breakpoint is hit again. We're going to do another analyze on the um, stack pointer and look at our A's. So here's the beginning of our A's. So that's so this time we passed 20. Remember that? So we passed. Uh, so here we have 4 A's, 8, 12, 16, 20. Now 20 is good, so let's see, let's, if we continue the execution of the program, let's see what happens. So C is going to be just short form for continue, so I'm going to press enter, and we got a seg fault. Okay, so we've got this that was hit. Um, now we can notice something here. This value is the exact same as this value. So this just happens to be the next four bytes after our buffer that, that's getting uh, executed. So this is going to be the return pointer. The other way we can tell that is by doing a backtrace on the program, or BT for short, same thing. So when we do a backtrace, we can see in main, this is the, this is the value in main that the function is going to return to when, um, when we're done check PW. So again, remember that this is check PW. When this is finished, it's going to return back to main. So this is the value, the return pointer in main that it's going to return to at the time of execution when this function is done. So basically what we want to do is overwrite the return pointer. So this is the value we want to overwrite to be able to control. So because we know that this is going to ex get executed at the time of the crash, as we can see, uh, as we can see here, this is the value. All right. So what we did is we wanted to pass these Bs into their stack and be able to control the return pointer. Um, so let's try to run this again. So we've got our 20 A's plus our four Bs. So this is going to be Again, um, 42 uh, in hex. So let's run this. It's hit. Our breakpoint was hit. That's good. So let's examine the stack at that time. <clears throat> um, all right. So there's all our A's. We can count 20 A's all the way up to here. And then there's our B's. There's our four B's right there. That's good. There's our 42. So if we continue execution of this, we do C for continue. Um, and then it's going to crash. So this is our 42, 42, 42, 42 at the time of the crash. So this is the time, the place of the instruction pointer is going to execute next. Um, so we've successfully overwritten that EIP instruction pointer value with these Bs right here. So we know the buffer size is going to take us 20 bytes, and then the next four bytes is going to overflow it. So we control the instruction pointer. So this is what we want to exploit right here. We want to pass our variables into here to be able to exploit this and gain uh, uh, execution of the program. So let's go back. Um, so we can see here, determine the buffer size and location and return pointer. We did that. Um, so the buffer is going to be 20. Return pointer is going to execute from 20 to 24 bytes. Um, so now we've got to analyze this um, libc system variable. So this is part of the return to libc style attack. So system is a function of libc that's going to execute um, a single argument. Um, and it's just going to execute uh, whatever is in the argument. So you can pass like a netcat command. You can pass like a bin sh. Um, something like that and whatever whatever runs it's gonna it's gonna call um, so let's find our value of system so that we can be able to pass it into uh, the program uh, so where are we at right now info break okay let's just run it um, it's gonna hit our breakpoint so now we want to do is print system so this is our value of system right here um, so this is going to be local to this environment, so this is a terminal. Um, so that's the thing with this type of attack, you need to have it locally. Um, you need to have local access in order to ex exploit this program. 
um, since you need to have system variables as well as environment variables that are unique to a, a terminal on the local host. So what we want to do is basically overwrite the return pointer at the time of the crash, which is here, with this value. So that when it's crashing, instead of taking Bs, it's going to execute system. Um, and then after that buffer, after system runs, we're going to pass it some extra argument so that it's going to execute um, a netcat command, basically, so that it, it, um, it gives us a shell under the, um, the privileges that the application is running. So we can also see here, uh, just do an ls-l, this is the program, um, pass the t, the rest point. So it's got this, it's, it's owned by root, um, and I'm currently, uh, my other window, I'm currently deadlist. Um, which is fine, but it's also got this S bit set, which is a sticky bit um, or SUID bit. So basically means that the program will run under the context of the owner. Um, so the owner is root, and over here in the shell, I am uh, deadlist, which is just another user, a low privilege user. So when I run it and exploit it, we're going to get a privilege escalation because the program is going to be running due to this S, S bit under the context of root. So this is a, this is a, why is this a privilege escalation? So here we go. Let's go back here. We have our address of system. Um, we're going to want to now uh, pass this into here as an argument. So we want to pass this into little endian format, which is basically meaning we need to put it backwards um, onto this, since things get copied onto the stack in backwards format. So uh, f0 slash x or e slash x ec slash x b7. So this is just the little, this is the little editing format of this, um, since that's the way that arguments get pushed onto the stack. So f0, uh, 4e, oops, not 4e, 4e, uh, ec, b7. So let's run that. Breakpoints hit, let's analyze. And here it is right here in the proper format right there. So B7, EC, 4E, F0. That's great. So we continue, it crashes, that's fine. Good. Um, so now we crash the program system. Um, we've overwritten the return pointer, that's our value um, with our system variable. Um, okay, so we're all good. Now, what we want to do is have um, an argument that we're going to pass the system. So we're going to use a local environment variable um, using a netcat shell. So we're just going to program uh, or export a, a netcat command as an environment variable, find the address of that environment variable using this env uh, binary right here. And then we're going to pass that as an argument into system at the time of um, the overflow to be able to execute. So let's just get out of here. Um, so what we want to do, we're going to export netcat, we're just going to call this our environment variable, and we're going to write our netcat command in here, what we want to ex ex execute, um, what we want to pass into system. Uh, so netcat, I shall LVP, so it's going to listen, 8989, we'll just set the local port to 8989 on this to listen on, and then we're going to do a dash E for execute, that's bin slash sh, so it's going to execute a shell um, when someone connects to it, basically. So that works. We can do echo dollar netcat. There's our command. That's great. Um, so what we want to do is find the location of this. So we got this m here, this m uh, binary. So we'll do a dot source m, and we're going to pass it the um, <clears throat> the name of our environment variable. So it's nc, and so this is telling us that nc netcat our environment variable is going to be located at this address. So this is the argument that we want to pass into system at the time of um, the overflow. Okay, so now we've got um, a location of our environment variable, which is going to be just down here. Oops. Uh, so this is our m command to get nc, is our environment variable, so this is going to be the location of it. So we want to use this to pass um, as the argument to system in the buffer, um, which is going to be executed at the time of the overflow. So the system is going to call this, this is going to run, this is going to execute a reverse shell, or a, a listen shell, 
under the context of root, then we connect to it, um, and then we're root. So what we want to do is take this and pass it as an argument in um, little engine format into the application. So uh, this is our um, this is our uh, buffer that we had here. So this is just going to run the program out of GDB. Um, so we got our 20 years again. We got our system variable right here. Then we're going to want to pass it. Um, this is going to be a junk buffer. So system is going to ignore these first four bytes and then it's going to execute the next four bytes. So these are the bytes that it's going to execute right here. Um, so we want to basically place this address uh, where these C's are going to run. So let's do this in a little new format. So 7B, FA, FF, BF. And let's give that a shot. So theoretically, this system is going to call. It's going to skip this. And then this is going to be the argument, the netcat command that we have right here. And it's going to execute. OK, so what happened? Uh, we got the shell command. So it's 89 not found. So that's interesting. So we were listening to, uh, in that command on port 8989. So it looks like something is being hit, which is good. Um, so it seems like we can execute the payload of a system, and we've got our netcat environment variable there, but it's only clipping a part of the environment variable. So it could either be hitting this 89 or this 89. We could test and trial and error, but I know just from, from trying before, it's going these two. So what we want to do is just count backwards to the beginning of this command um, to the beginning of NC. So if it's starting at, at this one, we want to count backwards. So bytes, so one byte, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so now um, basically we're 10 bytes too far, so we have to adjust the stack um, at that address of the environment variable at the time of the crash. Um, so again, since it's passed in little endian format, um, this is gonna be the last uh, number that's pushed onto the stack, so we need to adjust this byte. Um, oops, sorry, that's, that's the wrong one. This, is, here we go, this is gonna be the, the environment variable. This is going to be passed into the stack, so this is the one that we need to modify. So we're going to subtract 10 bytes from this to try to go to the beginning of that netcat command um, to execute. So we can do this in Python. Um, 0 by 7b. This is the value we want to, we want to modify. Um, so it's got, it is 123. So what we want to do is subtract 10 from that. So obviously 123 minus 10 is going to be 113. But if we get that in hex format, we want to see what that looks like. So it's 0 by 7, 1. So we just want to modify this right here to so 7, 1 to subtract 10 bytes to try and go to the beginning of our command and adjust the stack to actually get to the beginning of that netcat instead of starting at 89. So let's quit this. So let's try to run this again. So I'm going to modify that to adjust. So instead of 71, or instead of 70 b, sorry, we're going to go 71. So then since that's 7 b minus 10, so we get 71. And let's run it. Boom. All right, looks like it ran. And it's listening um, on 8989. So let's go over here. Uh, that's dot TUP. We'll grab 8989 port to be able to figure out. And it's listening. That's good. So let's connect to it. Local host with netcat. All right, port 8989. And we're root. Sweet, that's it. So we've successfully overflow, overwritten the buffer. Um, we have um, used our netcat variable and system, and system environment variable. Um, we've adjusted the stack location of it since um, parameters kind of get passed into this a bit weird um, and it has to be adjusted. And um, we successfully executed our shell and escalated privileges.